And my uh, talk uh, originally was about uh, from primary packaging to drug delivery systems, innovation and smart solutions for injectables. The ones who have been here before the session, Wolfgang Dirk already uh, talked about uh, one of our innovations about the multi-shell vials. And um, so I will concentrate in my talk a little more on prefillable syringes. So um, who is Gerresheimer? This is just an overview of what the talk will be about. So who is Gerresheimer? I will give you some figures and definitions. Um, tell you a little bit about the prefillable syringes we manufacture from uh, Gerresheimer. Talk a bit about uh, new and smart solutions. An important issue is how to choose the right syringe for your drug product and what uh, project partners are involved in this. And of course, there's a little take home message in the end. Gerresheimer is a global company. Uh, in 2011, we had about a billion euro. Uh, revenue. About 10,000 people are working for Gerresheimer and you can also buy uh, Gerresheimer stocks in Frankfurt at the stock exchange. Um, the same chart Wolfgang already had. Wolfgang was from the plastic systems department. I come from the tubular glass department and I said we'll concentrate on the syringes business. To give you some figures, uh, what we are talking about, the turnover now in US dollar um, was about, in 2011, was about 850,000 billion US dollars large, the market. Injectables um, contribute to this with about 28%, and this means it's 35 billion pieces of vials, ampules, cartridges, syringes, all these containers. If we have a look at the total syringe market, you see it's much smaller, but uh, syringes are, of course, uh, um, a growing uh, business. So you see here the annual growth rate of the syringes is about 9%, so not double digit, but a big growth in this business. We see that also with uh, requests for syringes. At the time being, the market looks like this. So Europe is leading with roughly 75% in the market with prefillable syringes, uh, followed by the USA and uh, Asia and the rest of the world. But the USA and all other parts of the world are catching up and uh, there is a high demand for the syringes. What are the growth drivers? Um, so why are people going for syringes. You have the vials which are established and we have these new developments with vials, uh, multi-shell for instance, but uh, there are quite some growth drivers. You all know, especially also in Europe, but also the rest of the world, we're facing an aging population. Uh, we have more and more chronic diseases and people are forced also by uh, the cost reduction in the health system to administer for instance, syringes at, uh, themselves at home. So there's no nurse involved, no doctor involved. They have to give the uh, drug to themselves. And that's much easier with a syringe uh, than with a vial. So it's much easier. So there is this growing demand of self-administration. Also auto-injectors, which are, say, around the syringe, uh, play a more and more important role. You don't see the needle anymore, which is much more convenient for the patient if he doesn't see the needle but just has to um, administer this auto-injector. So auto-injectors and related systems like pen systems, you know these pen systems from insulin, for instance, are growing. New safety features are coming to the market. There are many different uh, possibilities to protect the needle. Needle stick injuries is a big issue. And uh, syringes uh, offer a good way um, to cope with that. Ease of use. So it's much easier, as I said, to administer a syringe than to use a vial and do it back and forth. So there are more syringes. Also, the generics uh, companies look very much into syringes. They come maybe from vials, but they tend to look into syringes. They want to differentiate themselves from uh, their competitors and say a syringe might be a good way uh, to do that. 
also new injectable drugs, especially biotech drugs uh, based on proteins. Um, the preferred um, container is a syringe. And the emerging markets, uh, say in Asia and South America, they also um, can afford um, good medication by now and also look into drugs filled in syringes. So these are the growth drivers uh, which contribute to the market. Okay, some definitions. I'm talking about primary packaging and uh, drug delivery systems. What is it all about? So what do you think? What is a, what is a prefillable syringe? Is it, is it a primary packaging or is it a drug delivery system? Well, it's, it's both. So um, in the syringe, of course, it has direct contact to the drug dosage, uh, to, the, to the drug, but it's also a quite complex instrument to um, be used. And uh, the drug delivery system, of course, can be a bit misleading. Inhalers and other containers and other uh, also drug delivery systems. So I concentrate on these prefillable syringes mainly. So how does a state-of-the-art prefillable syringe look like today? You're invited to come also to our Gerresheimer booth. We have uh, the syringes there. But uh, that's um, how an RTF syringe looks like. RTF is the abbreviation for ready to fill. So these are the syringes which are packed sterile and we send to the customers and he just needs to fill the syringe. So this uh, square you see here is the sterile part. So the barrel with the closure system, this is a needle shield, uh, can also be a tip cap or so. Um, together in the packaging is sterile and we send that to the customer. You can also purchase from Gerasheimer plunger rods and backstops and finger flanges and the plunger stoppers, of course, a very important component. Uh, you, they can also be purchased uh, sterile. This is how a glass production, uh, some pictures look like. So this is the RTF production where the syringes are produced in Bünde in Germany. We have, this is the dedicated uh, site for syringes. This is the line where the glass uh, barrels are formed from glass tubes. So you can call this is the hot end and that's the cold end maybe. Just to give you an impression how the factory look like. So RTF, I already mentioned the uh, um, abbreviation. There is definitely a trend towards uh, ready to fill or ready to use components. In the past, uh, Gerresheimer and many other glass suppliers just produced the glass and sent it to the pharmaceutical company and they, the pharmaceutical company, needed to, to wash and siliconize. Siliconization is uh, mandatory, most of the cases, uh, to close and to sterilize and then it would be filled. Nowadays, with the RTF syringes, we offer these steps, the washing, siliconization, putting the closure on top and sterilization is carried out at our site in Bünde. So that the, the f uh, filler or the pharmaceutical company just needs to fill, put the plunger and to label. And that's definitely also a trend um, we are facing. Okay, let's get into the detail. Um, if you want to choose uh, a primary packaging, you of course have to consider what, uh, what drug uh, you want to fill and what con which container you uh, can use. Is it an ampule? Is it a vial? Is it a multi-shell vial maybe even? Or are you going for a cartridge, pensystem, a syringe, some customized uh, containers which we also can offer? What I want to stress is that we need to talk to you very early. So please come to us at an early stage. Don't come to us with a ready drug and say, I want to have it filled in this container. So it's very good for us also to know at an early stage um, and make a project out of it. So it's very important um, uh, to cooperate early. So who are the project partners? 
First of all, it's the drug development. Um, so if you dr develop a drug, it has to match the primary packaging. Um, it can be different. It can be a new drug you have developed. It can be an existing drug, and in the life cycle management, you may, be say, you may say, I'm changing from a vial to a syringe. You just can't do it from today to tomorrow, but you have to do some project on that. Or if you have a generic, uh, it's also important to cooperate. Another big uh, project partner on the other side is uh, the drug delivery system, which may be around the syringe. The syringe itself is a drug delivery system already, but you can add safety devices, you can add uh, um, auto injectors around. So uh, this is also, there is a link between these. Um, you cannot use any syringe, but it has to be adapted specialty. This is now a pen system, but it has to be adapted. So these are the questions uh, the, cost the end users may have. So it has to be safe, it must be easy, uh, e you can must easily be used, it must be robust, um, and it doesn't uh, need to be painful. Okay, so we see there are steadily increasing requirements towards this syringe. So we're in a squeeze situation. The syringe itself is quite limited in a way, so we cannot reinvent the wheel, but uh, we have this syringe. But uh, questions the drug developers may have is, is stability, is the drug stable in this syringe? Um, what about the surface adhesion? Do I lose uh, medication, the drug, which is... Uh, linked to the surface and cannot be administered anymore. Silicon oil is in 99% uh, of the cases, on all cases, we need silicon oil. We can reduce the silicon oil. Um, other questions are reduction of leachables, of tungsten, because uh, in the forming process of the syringes, there is a tungsten pin being used. Um, we can produce also tungsten-free syringes, but this has to be clarified. There is glue when you have a needle, the needle is glued in. So these uh, are the questions, especially for highly demanding, very sensitive biological drugs. And on the other hand, with an auto-injector or so, with an auto-injector you need very constant gliding forces. You have mostly a spring inside or so, so um, the syringe has to be has to work properly inside. It has to be tested and we need to trim the syringe for this application. Breakability. Of course, this is glass. Uh, and glass, you know, we have this sometimes, it can break, of course. And with a finger uh, flange in the back and the cones in the front, we can do something to make the glass more robust for this auto-injector um, applications. Um, the dimensions need to be quite tight. With glass, there are limitations because the glass is formed in a free-forming process, not in a mold. And um, so um, there are solutions to that, but we need to talk to the project partners early. Two other project partners are not mentioned here. It's the um, manufacturers of the, uh, the filling lines of the machines. Uh, the syringes run on these machines, they have to work on that, and also contract fillers um, need to talk to us. So there are many, many project partners involved. Maybe, of course, from my perspective, with the syringe in the center. Okay, that was already some background on how to choose the right syringe. Uh, I talked about that already. Regulatory requirements are also becoming more and more important. Um, and in the end, it comes to a material selection. And uh, I want to focus a little bit on plastics uh, versus glass. Glass uh, syringes are, in Europe at least, and most parts of the world, are the more than 95% of all syringes glass syrin are glass syringes. But um, you should consider also special kinds of plastics. Other important uh, parameters are stopper materials. I come to that. But if you look at glass, which is our main um, 
material we use. Don't look too much into detail, but glass has some properties uh, or characteristics. And uh, if you take kind of a traffic light approach, you can say glass it has advantages and disadvantages. So for instance, glass uh, um, can break. Where is it? I don't have it. Where is it? Here, breakability. Now so here. So glass can break, of course, um, and therefore you should think of alternatives. And one alternative can be using a plastic syringe, a so-called COP syringe, a COP material, cyclic olefin polymer. Um, this is a syringe uh, made by our co partner company in Japan, Tazai Kako. It's an alternative maybe to glass in under certain conditions. So if you have the same oh back the same um, approach with these traffic lights, you can compare the cyclic olefins and the glass, and you see that cyclic olefins may have some advantages, but it has uh, also disadvantages. So the barrier properties are not as good. So you have if you have a drug. You should consider both glass and plastic, and then in the end find the best solution for your drug. That's what I want to say. Don't look at too much into that details. Yeah, that's one of my favorite charts because I was involved in carrying out a lot of these studies. What we can do at our lab is we can carry out gliding force and uh, um, studies. Um, as I said, especially for auto injectors, you need very constant gliding forces, and uh, we have the lab equipment to carry out some tests. You can uh, we have the variables of the amount of silicon oil, mode of application of the stopper, and uh, very important is the coating and the design of the stopper as well. So we have uh, plenty of data available which we can uh, in. Uh, Partly we can share that with you, and um, we can also support the customers with our equipment and do some basic studies. Of course, we do not know exactly which drug you fill, because uh, we only offer the basically the empty syringes, but we can uh, give you some hints and maybe help to choose the right uh, glass container for you. Okay, that's the take-home messages. Not new for the most of you. Uh, Prefillable syringes are both primary packaging and drug delivery system. It's important this early cooperation of syringe manufacturer with the formulation development, device developers, also with uh, contract fillers and machine manufacturers. Uh, please consider both glass and also COP as options for your drug. Open your mind and we can assist you in optimizing syringe functionality. We are, it's not a big lab we have, but uh, well equipped. Uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, I'm situated in Bünde, which is in Germany, where we manufacture all the syringes. Thank you very much. Questions? You can also come to the booth. I'll be there later as well. Thank you.